Today we're going to be looking at um, finding examples in a story of setting and context using our find our five senses. All right, smell, touch, taste, hearing, and sight. Thank you. All right. What is setting in context? Do you want to read what's on the board? Mm -hmm. Setting the context refers to the time, place, and circumstances of a narrative essay or book. Good. Okay. So setting, our environment around us. The story, talking about the things that are in the character's environment. Okay. Context is really what's going on in the story. What's happening? What does the story feel like? What's happening to the character? Okay. Now, when we're reading, we can get an idea of setting and context by focusing on what the what the character is feeling with their five senses. All right, we got hearing, taste, touch, smell, and sight. So to get warmed up, um, I want you to think about your commute to school this morning. How did you get to school this morning? I walked. You walked. Okay. All right. So what's an example of something you heard when you walked into school today? I heard cars honking. Okay, heard cars on. Good. That's a good example. Okay. What's something you tasted on the way to school? Okay. Coffee in the morning. Okay. Coffee has a strong after taste, right? So you probably tasted the whole walk to school. Okay. So taste. Coffee. Let me ask you, was the coffee a little too hot when you drank it? Yeah. Alright, so keep that in mind as you keep going. Um, what did you feel on your way to school? I felt the coldness of everybody in the winter. Okay, it's been a cold winter. Everybody's been suffering through this. Alright, so it's definitely cold this morning. So that was something you felt. Cold. Right. Smell? What you smell on the Okay. So there's a lot of traffic going outside mm -hmm. on the way. Everybody's busy to get to work or to school. So yeah, it's about burning rubber. Some somebody's probably late on their way to work and skimming out of their driveway. Going probably a little too fast. So as a result, you got the smell burning rubber. Um, sight. What did you see? A lot of kids outside. Correct. A lot of kids. Said many children. Okay. So with your description of your commute to work, I can kind of get a sense of the setting outside. You said it was a cold day. Um, cars honking outside. You smell burning rubber. There were many children around. All right. It sounds to me that it was a pretty hectic commute to, to school. All right. So just by those descriptions of your five senses, we got, I got a pretty good idea of what was going on, how your commute was. It sounds like it was hectic. It was noisy. It was cold. Pretty uncomfortable. All right. But those are descriptions that we're looking for in a story that helps us get a feel for it. Right? That's what authors are trying to do to make us engage in the story, to give us feelings that we can relate to, so that we feel the character. And that's what we're going to do when we read today. As we read, we're going to read a story called Rules of the Game by Ian Stanley. And as we read, I want you to pay particular attention to these five senses and how the author is describing them. And that will give us an idea of what setting characters are in and what's going on in that setting. That's the context. All right? So I'm going to begin to start us off. And then I'm going to have you continue reading after after I'm finished. Um, but as I read, I want you to stop me when you hear a description of sight, smell, touch, taste, or hearing. Okay? My mother imparted her daily truths so she could help my brothers and me rise above our circumstances. We lived in San Francisco's Chinatown. Like most of other Chinese children who played in the back alleys of restaurants and curio shops, I didn't think we were poor. Good question. Okay, good. Good example. 
We're seeing children in the shops. Very good. Very good. We're going to continue to do what we want. Okay? I want to keep, let me know as soon as you see him. Right? It's very good. My bowl was always full. Three, five course meals every day, beginning with a soup full of mysterious things I didn't want to know the names of. Okay. So his bowl was always full. That gives you an idea. The context was in comparison to other kids in the neighborhood. He may have more than, than, than the rest of them. His bowl was always full. Very good. Very good. Um, we lived in Waverly Place in a warm, clean two bedroom flat that sat above a small Chinese bakery. Specializing in steamed pastries and dim sum. Okay, clean it. So we're seeing almost parallel here, right? So who do you who do you think lives in a better circumstance, uh, Waverly or the other kids in the neighborhood? Waverly. Very good. All right, so I'm going to have you continue reading from where we left off. And with a highlighter, highlight every single description of detail that you come across. All right? And then afterwards, we're going to list everything that you see. Okay? All right, Ashley, did you have a chance to uh, finish reading? Yeah. All right. So tell me, give me some of the examples of details, the sensory details that you found in the story. Um, the snow, I have... No, very good red beans and the odor of fried sesame rice. Excellent. Excellent. Very good. Smell, and I'm already getting a sense. Tell me again, what were, what was the, uh, the what, what were the things you smelled? It smelled fragrant red beans and the odor of fried sesame rice. So fragrant. That gives, that's a pleasant feeling. Right? So I'm getting the feeling that he's enjoying where he's at. And I think I would too. Would you? Fried dumplings and, and all these fragrant foods. That's, that sounds... Excellent. So we're getting a good feeling right now. All right. Um, what was another example that you found? Um, the next week. The next week. Okay. Why did you think that that was? Why did you list that as an example? It's like I could picture what the week would be like for him. Okay. To see him in the future. Okay. So you're picturing the week and you're getting a good sense of setting, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's perfect. That's perfect. That's a perfect idea, a perfect way to get a sense of setting within a story. But we wanted to focus on the five senses, remember? All right. And even though that's a perfect example of the setting, we're looking for details involving the senses. So we want to know smell, sight, taste, touch, hearing. You could get a good sense of time if you can see the sunrise and you know it's, it's in the morning. Um, and you're using your eyes to see it. So in that way, I could see how you would use your senses to get an idea of time. But we want to know specific details. Okay. But um, I like what you're thinking. I think it's a great track you're on. But let's focus on the five senses. Right. So did you have another uh, example? Yeah. Um, I had to find out their orders in the fish market. Okay. So tell me why. Why did you uh, choose that one? Well, because I could like. Here and almost see everyone in the fish market getting their orders. Okay, so you're you're getting even. So what what feel are you getting in this environment based on those descriptions? Warm, excited, kind of loud, and okay, crowded, loud. But do you think? How do you think the main character feels about where he is? Is he uncomfortable? Is he not happy there. Okay. Okay. All right. So based on based on the evidence that you gathered right now, you think that he's unhappy. He's not comfortable right now. Okay. All right. So we're going to keep reading, keep digging a little bit more, and we'll get a better sense of setting and context based on how that character feels when he describes. Everything, his environment with his five senses. Right. Let's keep reading. All right. So, since before you read, um, you told me that you didn't think that Waverly had a positive experience growing up in China. 
account. Do you still feel that way since you finished the story? No. No, you don't feel that way. Okay. Tell me why. Um, well, I said that he had, I told him that he had good feelings, even though it's a crazy place. He likes the smell of the food. And um, it describes when he was running with his friends from the back taking pictures. And he just talked about his life so positively that it just like changed my mind. So what about the descriptions that he experienced with his senses? Um, the smell, fragrances of different types of food. Um, he saw different people in the marketplaces. And, um, so were all those descriptions of senses positive? Yes, they were positive. Okay, so that gives you a sense of his feelings about Chinatown. He had a positive experience based on what he felt in his surroundings. And you feel things with your senses. Okay? So very good. We're on the right track. So what I want you to do now is a little bit of writing. Okay? This is the prompt that I want you to follow. Okay? Use sensory details that describe the setting in the story to show Waverly's feelings about living in Chinatown. Alright? So, I'd like you to write a paragraph about using evidence from the story describing Waverly's positive feelings about living in China. Okay? 